imagine the cast of Grease, but all native. What does that look like in your mind? Okay, what's also awesome about it is, is you know, the 60s weren't that good for indigenous people. You know what I mean? We were dealing with boarding schools, residential schools. We were dealing with, you know, Indian agents, and we weren't able to dance up and down the streets like Olivia Newton-John and John Travolta during this time. So it's almost like we get to relive you know, the late 50s, early 60s. So Bear Grease is this indigenous twist to the classic. It's still the musical. We still have the same vibe, but we give it a little hip hop twist. And a lot of the lyrics are parodies of the songs. So you'll get the, you'll get the native humor and people who are non-indigenous will also be like, yo, this is insane for my eyes to see something like this. Our first show was off the wall, right? What was the crowd there? Our first show was, I would say, 90%, if not all, <clears throat> Caucasian, white. And they were nonstop laughing. They're and that's, the that's the payoff, is when you're sitting there and you're like, before your first show, it's like, are they gonna get the jokes? Are they gonna be offended? Are they gonna, and they were just, I mean, laughing, laughing the whole time. Bear Grease has been a really um, awesome journey so far for you guys. Yes. Um, First off, how has that transition been to like going full bore into the theater world? Mm. Wow. Um, well, it just it was a uh, it was definitely going to happen, right? As we started working together, we wanted to create a live show that was a uh, was a theatrical performance. You know, we always wanted to incorporate something you know just magical into our set. Um, we had the vision of a uh, of Bear Grease. For, for, for quite a while. Uh, Bannock Grease, I think was the first, the first rough name for mm -hmm. it. Um, that, was a, that was a twist we were gonna do. And when we moved here, um, before COVID hit, uh, we were able to catch a fringe and we were in love. We're like, yo, this town is dope. It really, the art scene here is just awesome. All the arts people here are just so loving um, and we, we're like, yo, when we move here, we're gonna totally connect with Fringe. We're gonna work on Bear Grease. Um, and then COVID hit, so that didn't happen. Uh, we were gonna work on it for the kids too in Enoch. Um, we wrote it kind of like a cool little PG version of it. And uh, so we just um, decided to adult it up um, and do it ourselves. When. Uh, when the regulations started dropping slightly, um, not much in the schools, but you know, in the city, uh, we decided to really go for it. Um, Murray and the, the team at Fringe had reached out to us about you know, the, the Bayona stage, and uh, they were looking for some, some indigenous acts, and they invited Lightning Cloud to perform. I said, no, we're not just gonna perform, though. We had this great idea. And we had pulled out the script, and uh, let's make this happen. You know, it's bigger than this li lightning cloud. It'll be lightning cloud presents Bear Grease. It's almost like this new album we're working on, where it's a flip, or it's just this indigenous twist to the classic. Um, the writing process of it was like the writing process of, you know, our third album. The way we put it together was like a music video, you know, shot in the '50s. This doo wop, hip hop rap doo-wop hip-hopera, you know, this fusion of doo-wop and hip-hop and, and powwow and culture is, uh, is almost like our making of Treaty 6, you know? It's like our way to shine over here and how it came together was just so beautiful. How we found the right pieces, the right players, you know, the Tammy Rays, you know, I work with Tammy Ray in education um, in Enoch. And, I work with Bryce more in there too. And I was like, yo, we have this amazing idea. Give me a chance. It's gonna sound a little wild, but I guarantee you it's gonna be dope. Just give it a shot. And the, the whole team pulled together and that's how uh, Bear Grease came to be. Um, so what's the future look like? I mean, you guys are on the road, you're in it right now. Um, but are there other productions that are in the same vein as Bear Grease that you guys have in mind? Or is this like, it's gonna be a franchise? <laughs> yeah, we have a couple of pots brewing. <laughs> um, we want to do another couple parodies, you know, um, Hairspray, we wanna do Bear Spray. 
um, West Side Story, we want to do Red Side Story. So those are like in pencil right now. We're putting those together right now in our basement, just having little sessions, mm -hmm. <laughs> writing sessions where we put our ideas down. and. We like that pocket, that 50s and 60s pocket. It's really dope for us, and it, it works with the kind of music that we do. So we'll we'll keep it, you'll keep venturing there. But also at the same time, it's like Bear Grease is growing. You know, it could you know, it's like it's not the end of Bear Grease. It's going to be so much better, and before you know it, will be enough to to really hit that citadel, and then. When we're old and gray, we can do the Mayfield Dinner Theater. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think as well, what we eventually want to do too is step out of the acting and cast it, you know, um, professional dancers and especially with West Side Story, Red Side Story, you know, we want to cast it and just direct just it, it direct you know, and be, um, be behind the scenes next time and just kind of really fine tune it exactly the way we want. It's hard to direct and be in the show at the same time. It's like, you can't really focus 100 million percent on each one, you know what I mean? So, for real, yeah. That's the goal. Yeah. yeah. Remember, I was like, man, I'm, when we, I was like, I wasn't even gonna be in it. Remember, you're like, babe, you gotta play Danny. He had to play Danny. I'm like, just for this, come on, you got to. I mean, he has the spunk and, and everything about one. it. At yeah. least once, yeah. And then all the Elvis dance moves I've learned yeah. <laughs> growing yeah, up, yeah, get yeah. them all in there. And uh, yeah, we did it. Yeah. I just gotta put on a little fake pompadour. What's, um, do you have any like tips, pro tips, advice, or how did you just get in there and make it happen? How would you, uh, <sighs> how would you give advice for that? I, I would say in LA, man, it's like this different monster, right? Where, where everybody is, it's the best of every city moves over there to try to make it big. So you're competing with the best from every freaking city, town, state who has big dreams. So our competition is hungry people who just are trying to think of the next big idea. So we're, we're from that train, that runaway train of just idea machines and idea and content and let's go, let's go. So you kind of have to have that drive, you know, inside of you that there's somebody else out there that's trying to get their stuff going too, you know, and what makes yours different? What makes yours pop? What makes yours stand out? How bad do you want it to happen? Just do it. Just do it. Don't stop. If you have an idea, write it down. Yeah. Write it down and work on it every single day, even if it's 10 minutes. But the longer you let it sit, the longer you kind of just, when you got that fire, when you have that idea, write it down and just work on it, work on it, work on it, and don't stop until it's finished. And then you might go back and you might fine tune it and change some things, but don't stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we've had, we've seen that happen so many times where we're talking with friends or acquaintances where they have great ideas were just like wow and then it kind of just dwindles off the work ethic isn't there like you said the drive you know you got to have like it's discipline too you know having don't, wanting it really bad and don't, don't be afraid to fail like that's the almost the almost the better lesson it's like you also learn what not to do what doesn't work fall in love with like oh man okay next time I'm going to listen to myself and I'm going to do it like this and it, it really is. You could, you could learn so much from it not going the way you want it to go. That way, next time, you have a better plan. Like, be okay with that. Be okay with the idea of it not doing good or a song not being as good as you want. And then be okay with the idea of something you don't put too much effort in, being the one and being the one that blows up. You know, you never know what's going to take off. You never know what's going to happen. Just do it all, you know? Obviously, wait till, you know, it feels right and, you know, you have all the pre-stuff made, but... Put it out, put out the work, you put out the freaking work. Life is short, put out your content, or else it's gonna be in a box under your bed. In you know? your brain forever. In your brain forever, <laughs> yeah. Go, do it. Thank you.